Africa Twin twice in a row today for a 8,000 mile service. But enough with the chit chat, let's get on it. This is how we're gonna do this. Whatever I have on the tablet is gonna show up right here so you guys can follow along. Because I've done the 4,000 mile service video and because some of the items in the 8,000 miles are the same as the 4,000 miles, I'm not gonna repeat it and keep this video short and to the point. The items I'm talking about have been circled with a red pen so that you guys know exactly what I'm looking at. The best way of doing this would be go to the 4,000 mile video, do those items, then come back to the 8,000 miles video and finish that way. When it comes to the oil change, I've done a specific video just for the oil change. And that's because there are certain items that need to be done properly and the oil change is one of them. So you guys can refer to that video in the description below. Technically, this is the second item on the list, but it's so simple. Let's just do it and get it out of the way. And it's checking the throttle. The only thing they wanna see is that the throttle opens up free and smooth and then closes from any position. Simple enough, it feels brand new. So done, moving on. Time to check the fuel lines. The fuel lines are under the fuel tank, but you do not need to remove the fuel tank. And I really don't wanna remove all of this just so I can take a look under there. But let's begin by removing the seat. You all know how to do this. Once you remove uh, the seat, you gotta lose this bolt over here and there is one under there. We're gonna take care of the one under there by doing this. Just grab it nice and easy and there is a pop out thing. So nice and easy, pull right there, the first clip and then the second clip and that uh, bolt, it's right in there. And from the side, put your Allen in there. And there it is. Once you remove those two screws over there, it's time to pull and there are some bosses in grommets. One, and then some Velcro, some more Velcro, and some more of those grommets and those little bosses, as Honda calls them. Over here, one over here, one over here. Do that on the side. At this point, in theory, we need to release the fuel tank and lift it up. The problem is, if I lift up the fuel tank, then I definitely need to remove all this stuff up front. But remember, this is an 8,000 mile service and needs to be repeated every 8,000 miles. If this was three years down the road, yes, that point, remove this just like we do for the air filter. There is a video about it. And then you can lift the tank by uh, loosening up the, the bolt over here. But because it's the very first 8,000 mile service, get yourself a flashlight and look through here. You're gonna be able to see the main fuel line and all the other fuel line that come out from the tank. So you don't have to remove this whole thing. And that right there that I'm moving right now is the big fuel line that they're telling you to check. So check that one. And then if you look further down, that way you can see the lines coming down from the fuel tank. And as I'm looking in there, everything looks pristine. Why? Because it's a 2021 bike and it's 2023. It's less than two years old. And we're talking about a Honda. So the rubber of those hoses, it's not gonna go bad in a year and a half. At the very least, make sure you take a look. But 
lifting the tank at this point and age of the bike, it's really overkill. It's now time to do the radiator coolant and the cooling system in general. First of all, start from the front, look at the radiator. It's now the time either to straighten up the blades of the radiator if they got bent or remove rocks, bugs, or whatever else. So take a close look in there and make sure that there are no leaks, uh, there are no nothing strange. Mine looks pretty good. Uh, so a couple of bugs that we got to remove and that's about it. We can move on. When it comes to the coolant, check the coolant level, which should be between max and min. The max line is up front, the min line is in the back, and there is still the color is supposed to be. Otherwise, we're gonna add some more in there. But you need to check it with the engine running and with the bike at temperature. So I'm gonna have to do this outside the garage, otherwise I'll pass out. Time to take care of the brake system. When Honda says brake system, it means the whole system, literally. So what you need to do, which if you actually ride the bike, you're gonna know this before you do the service, but let's do the, the way Honda wants it. So you gotta squeeze the brake and make sure that the brakes are not spongy and they feel pretty good. Remember, you have rubber hoses, so a little compression is okay because it's the hose here that is slightly expanding. If you pinch the lever, you hold the pinched and the lever little by little comes back, now you have air in the system, you need to bleed the brakes and so on. I'm gonna check the, the rear and it feels firm, the pedal doesn't push down. Once you check that the brakes feel fine, it's time to look at the bolts and the, the hoses. Make sure all the hoses and the bolts are in good conditions, no cracks, no loose bolts. Same thing front and back, and everything seems to be in pretty good condition. It's now time to check the brake light and the brake light switch. Now, first of all, make sure that the brake light works. And there it is, uh, rear and front. The second thing is the brake light needs to come on slightly before the brakes. And that means that when you push the pedal, the brake light needs to come on and then you need to have some more to go down. When it comes to the front, you can hear the micro switch clicking. The brake light will come on way before the brakes are applied. Obviously, the front is non-adjustable, but the rear can be adjusted. And you need to just use the adjuster over there. You hold the switch and turn the adjuster up or down, depends what you need. Very simple, although it's cramped, so you might fiddle a bit to make it work. The next few things need to be done with the garage door open and with the bike on the ground. One of them is the idle check. The way the idle check is done is very simple. If you look in the manual, the manual says uh, to plug in a tachometer into the bike. Well, the bike has a tachometer, so might as well use it. What I like to do is go to the simplest page on the motorcycle screen over there and make sure that the RPM, after the bike has warmed up, that the RPM is at 1250 RPM. 1250 RPM is the first little line after the 1000 RPM, simple as that. If you ride your bike constantly, most of this stuff, it's, uh, you know about it. If the idle is too high, you'll know about it and you are gonna wanna adjust it. If the suspensions don't work properly, you'll know about it. 
When it comes to the suspensions, the, the way they want you to do it is, uh, first of all, get on the bike, get on the brake and pump the suspensions make sure everything is fine and then after that give a good look look for leaks look for scratches gouges on the fork tube stuff like that very simple once again a few mechanical skills are required for a few items but most of the other stuff is just pay attention to your motorcycle simple as that as you're inspecting the suspensions for leaks, for gouges, and all those other good things, it's also a good time to start from the front, moving back to check nuts and bolts. So just make sure that all the nuts and bolts around the bike are not loose or missing, because if you off-road a lot, there might be a chance you'll miss a bolt or two. It's now time to check the steering heads. As you guys can see, I lifted the bike front tire or front wheel off the ground using a jack and a stand in the back. Now, two people would be best to want to make sure that the bike doesn't tumble over and one up front. I'm by myself, so here it is, the rear jack stand. It's pretty good, so I kind of trust that. What you need to do is grab the front fork and give it a good shake. If you do this, when you do this, you can feel this going kum 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 kum. Steering head needs to be either adjusted or the bearing replaced, but it's working just fine. Also move the front from side to side. It needs to be smooth and nice and easy to move. As you guys can see, it's very smooth and it moves no problem. So my steering heads is still a-okay. Moving on, it's time to check the side stand. When you do the side stand check, obviously you check the spring up here. You make sure it moves nice and smoothly. You make sure that the pivot point over here doesn't need to be greased up or anything. So if it does, grease it up, simple as that. But another check you're gonna do is to get on top of your bike Start it up, pull the clutch, first gear, and put the kickstand down. When you put the kickstand down, the bike needs to shut off. If the bike shuts off, great, you just pass the test. If the bike doesn't, uh, now you gotta find the problem, either the micro switch down there or uh, some other electrical problem you're gonna be chasing for a long time. I left the best for last, and the last thing to do is to adjust the headlight. There is a simple way. You need to be 10 meters from a flat surface, and then you gotta measure up. That goes according to whichever laws is in your state. My suggestion is get in the back of the garage, point at the garage door, and eyeball it, more or less. If you're not happy with where the light is pointing at that moment, you can adjust it. Remember, stay on the bike while you do the adjustment because as you sit on the bike, the rear suspension might squat or the front suspension might compress and the headlight aim is gonna change. But come here, let me show you how to adjust it. If you guys look in there, there is one of those wheels on each side and by turning those wheels you can raise or lower the headlight. And we're done for the day. Do not forget to double check the oil level. Make sure you have the correct oil level down there and that, uh, that is complete. You guys just did an 8,000 mile service and between this service and the video about the 4,000 miles and the video about replacing the air filter and replacing the oil and oil filter, you guys have enough to go for the next few steps in the maintenance schedule. When it comes time to do the spark plugs, well, come back to the channel. Most likely by then I'm gonna have a video about on how to do the spark plug uh, as well. 
For everything I used in this video, check the links in the descriptions. Thank you very much to my patrons. You guys are the best. We are growing slowly but steadily. And you know, I couldn't be doing this without you. For everybody else, thank you very much. Dai a tutti and I'll see you next time. <music>